Hey guys, Jim Edwards here along with Stu Smith. And today we are here for the Sales Copywriting and Content Marketing Hacks podcast, episode 44. And I can't think of anything that rhymes with 44. So doing more just, with 44. Uh, well, it's better than what I came up with. So good job, Stu. There you go. Um, so today we are actually going to talk about the book launch, the recent book launch of Copywriting Secrets, which we're still kind of in the, we're, we're kind of still in the middle of the launch. Um, and then there's some things that are going to be coming up that are pretty cool. And Stu, what, tell everybody the idea that you had and why we're talking about this. Well, I, I will say this, something that we always did, no matter what we were doing, whether it was a training exercise, an actual, you know, we who? when I was in the Navy, right? Okay. This is where I learned this. Okay. And it is just called a lessons learned. So what did we learn from this um, scenario? What did we learn from this training? What did we learn from this book launch? What did we learn from this product launch? Right. Okay. So, you know, what could we have done better? What screwed up? How did we adapt in okay. the middle of it? So, you know, you kind of think of it almost like a little mission and then like what, you know, at every phase of this process, you know, what could we have done to make it run smoother? Okay. So the, the only thing that I'm going to do before we launch into this is um, because this is so cool. Um, <laughs> I got this sign. <laughs> so I can make this like a marquee thing. It even lights up. Is that cool or what? Okay. I even like came that. with emojis. I like and that. Uh, so I can have like my own marquee. And, huh. uh, can you make changes that. to that is that oh just, yeah dude yeah yeah dude the, the little the i got them taped on the edges because they'll just fall out oh okay but yeah i got tons i got like uh 200 letters and stuff that oh. emojis and stuff that i can slide them in and out and make it say anything i love it is that cool or what that is cool it's a little thing i got that at at ollie's which is like a big lot yeah yeah i know and what that is we have it was eight dollars Genius. It was eight bucks at Ollie's, man. Genius. So, That's a good lesson learned right there. And I even have a, a mini sign. I even have a mini one too. Dang. I sold those for eight bucks. So Okay. Okay. Anyway, just totally <laughs> sidetracking you, but that's cool, right? Yeah, I like it. Um Okay. So I'm ready. What do you want to know? All right. So you obviously did a really good job a month out from this book being able to be purchased, right? You wrote this thing a long time ago. I wrote this thing a year and a half ago. Right. And then you got, and, it and got a whole bunch of them sitting in your carport. Well, no, I didn't do that. No, I mean, no, that one. Yeah, I had some in the garage, but that was for a different reason. So I'll explain to you what I yeah. did. Yes. Okay. So the whole reason that I wrote the book was ultimately to create a funnel that led people to funnel scripts. I mean, that's just honestly why I wrote it to give yeah. me credibility and get people to funnel scripts. So what happened was I wrote the book, I finished the book, and then I was hoping that we would um, create the funnel and that, that Russell and the click funnels guys would get behind it. And so, but they're super busy. I mean, they're just, they're super, super busy operating at a whole different level than the rest of us. And so they came out with a program called 10x it was about how Russell sold from the stage and the how he does the perfect webinar and so what i did originally the book was done but i wasn't sure when i was going to release it so i i offered the book as a bonus for people who bought his 10x thing through me um through my affiliate link and I ended up being the number one affiliate for that launch like like crushed it so i had a, a thousand of them printed up and we sold the majority of them. So I had some left and we sent those to the fulfillment house. Well, then I just kind of sat on it because I've been getting busy, 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 just busy with everything. We relaunched funnel scripts, all this stuff happened. And then finally people kept saying, when are you going to release the book? So in August, I was sitting here, I had the book. I'm like, damn, I got to get this book out. So I took a picture, you know how you do stuff and you look back and you're like, dang, you know, <laughs> and you know, when you did it, that I'm going to pay for this later, but I'm, I, apparently I grew web balls or something and I'm like, okay, this book will be available no later than the end of September. And I did this big thing about it, which entailed posting a picture and posting it in one spot on 
Facebook. That's what I did. Right. Well, all these people were like, yay, finally, finally, finally. I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm going to have to do this. And so we, we had to get everything all set up and we finally got it all set up and we released it on the very last day of September. And so I had ordered another thousand copies and they were at the um, fulfillment house. So we had like, I don't know, 1300 copies there, call it that. And I said, okay, I know I'm good. I'm going to be good. And so I, I launched it out to my list, but as I'm launching it, I didn't even launch it out to my list. I launched it out to um, a pre-notification list, people who signed up, Hey, let me know when you're going to release the book. And then I released it to my group. Little did I know we'd had a malfunction in our, um, our autoresponder. So really the, the launch only happened on Facebook. Like, like 70 people got an email out of the hundreds that had signed up wanting the email. So it was all happening on Facebook. So this was Monday. This was two, like two weeks ago yesterday. It's or day before yesterday, whenever this is. And so I got a call from... Um, Dave Woodward, who's the, um, I'm not sure what his title is. He's, he's like the second in command over in, over at ClickFunnels. And he's like, Hey man, we, um, we really want to get behind your book and, and we've got time and we'd like to pull it into our affiliate program and, and set it up. So it truly is the front end, a front end for funnel scripts. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> but I can't do it today because I got to get this thing out or people are going to say, oh, Jim Edwards is full of crap. He said, okay. So while we're launching the book to my list, behind the scenes, we're scrambling to totally redo everything mechanically to get this thing over into their, their system in ClickFunnels. I mean, we added in ClickFunnels, but there's all this behind the scenes stuff with getting people into the membership and other things. And it was not, it, it wasn't as easy as just cloning a funnel and opening it up. So while we're launching the book and dealing with all that stuff, I'm making my team do all this other stuff. And we're all, you know, and we're working with the ClickFunnels people while we're launching the book. And so, I mean, you're talking about 16, 18 hour days year that we're doing over this three, four day period. And so on Thursday, we finally, at the end of the day, everything was set. And I, we had done close to nine, 800 sales, 800 sales to my list, but it wasn't even my list. I've never announced the book out to my list yet. Um, I mean, I, it was just the little 800 people from, I mean, 800 from my, my Facebook list, which is actually amazing to think that we sold that many books just based on Facebook with no paid ads, just building excitement. So um, well, I take it back. They've heard about my book in my weekly update, but I've never sent a, anyway, I'm going to yeah. my big list. And so what happened was I, I called Dave and I said, Hey man, how many, how many books do you think I ought to order? get going. He said, um, yeah, get a thousand. I said, okay. So, um, they sent an email on Friday by Saturday morning, we had sold 5,000 books. <laughs> it's like, Oh my God. I mean, it, you talk about, it was very stressful, stressful in a good way, but still stressful. Sure. The only thing more stressful than waking up and having no orders is waking up and seeing, Oh, there's 5,000 people around the world. Literally around yep. the world who want this book and are expecting it to show up now. So I ordered, um, as we're watching this thing go by, I'm ordering these books on a Saturday. Well, I mean, you order books, they got to get printed. They got to get shipped. Um, I ordered, I mean, it's not cheap. either. Yeah. That's a lot of manual labor too. It's you yeah. Know, but you get that done. It's yeah. a lot. It's expensive. Yeah. Um, so. I ordered 2000 books in the morning. Then around lunchtime, order another 2000 books. Then I ordered another 2000 books. So I'm ordered 6,000 books on Saturday. And, um, you know, I'm paying for two day printing and then, Ooh. you know, and then expedited shipping. So even with two day printing and expedited shipping, it still takes about 
you know, seven business days for the books to show up. So more keeps selling. So I'm ordering more and I'm ordering more. And I'm like, hey, Terry, you got to pay off the American Express because <laughs> I got to order more. And she's like, what are you? Uh, it, it just, it, it was, it was very stressful. So now we're up to, as of this moment, I got the figure this morning, we're up to 9,386 books sold since in, in basically two weeks. And that's in the click funnels side. That's total. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so the point is that, I mean, I order, I just ordered another 2000 books yesterday to try and get ahead of this. And then I had this other order where you can order them on a slow boat from wherever. And they cost like a third of what they cost expedited, but you got to wait 21 business days. So I mm. ordered them way back Smart. and they're working their way <laughs> along. Yeah. So by the end of next week, or by the middle of next week, I should have like 2000 extra books sitting there to deal with demand. And, you know, when we start doing advertising and other stuff, so it's, you know, it, it it's been really cool. And the coolest thing has been seeing people's reactions, seeing people, you know, posing with the book going like this and, I um, even saw somebody had their, the cutest little girl, man, I saw just, that. just the cutest little girl. And she's like, yeah, you know, doing cute. that. And people are posting pictures of the book when they get it and they're all excited and they're, they're loving the audio book that you and I did. People are really digging that format. I, I was cool. not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. You know, I, I know we put value into it, but I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sure you know how it is, man. I mean, you do your best and then you hope people like it and you just don't know. And so people are digging the book. They're posting pictures of it. I think we're in front of it now because I, it's like 7,000 books are being delivered to the fulfillment house today and tomorrow. Um, so that should, you know, they should be getting them out. And so by the end of this week, they should all be in the mail out to everybody. Um, and so I'm, I feel really blessed and happy and the, I will feel more blessed and happy when everybody's got their book and, but, and, and people really do seem to be enjoying the book and, and liking it and it's helping them and it's accomplishing my purpose, which as I told you way back when I did not write this book to teach copywriters, the finer points of copywriting. This book is intended to help people, normal people like us who are not professional copywriters know how to put words on paper, words on a screen and have words come out of their mouth to get their target audience to buy from them without having to become a door to door salesman in the process. Right. So that's, um, is that kind of the upfront summary you were looking for? Yeah, exactly. I, well, I mean, now let's take a look, step back and just say, all right, at pre-launch, you know, your mm -hmm. original goal was to write a book for funnel scripts, be part of your affiliate that was right. accomplished. Mission yes. accomplished, went really well. Yes. You did really well. You got a nice little plaque back there. Right? <laughs> that, that's, that. not a little, that's not a little plaque. That's a big ass plaque. I know. That's pretty impressive. And that means, <laughs> that means a lot. So it worked. Right. Were you there? Then you decided to take that content and use it somewhere else with a, an official book launch for yourself right. and right. For your podcast and for your, you know, uh, social media and everything like that for your list, right? right. For, for your list, a so Jim Edwards method. And that one, I, I get it. I, I get the fact that you had to rush and added a lot of stress to yourself because you don't really know what the demand is until you see what the demand is. And that's, and, and that's hard. Cause if on the flip side, I could have ordered 10,000 books and we sold 500 and I'm right. sitting there paying warehouse fees on 9,500 books going, how am I going to sell yeah. these? Free and people books? do that. Yes. People have done that. 100%. Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, that stress, dude, you sell oh, real yeah. books. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's tough. Um, I, how do you think you could in the future when you do this again, <laughs> when I do this again, <laughs> yeah, if you do this again, avoid that high markup on the, uh, on when you had to scale up so quickly. I, I don't know if you can, 
I okay. honestly, I mean, I, I, because it's, it's the thing of, I should have, I should have gotten a couple, I should have had a couple thousand books sitting there waiting, but I had 1400 I mean, um, sitting close. there. Yeah. It, it, it just, I don't know if you can, you just don't know. And, and moving forward, I, I just don't know. I mean, well, I mean the, the if you one think thing, about it, th this is every publisher's dilemma, right? That they have. They don't realize the demand that they are going to be experiencing. Yeah, you don't know till it happens, and uh, whether or not they want to invest that money up front, right? Um, you, I mean, I, I will say this, you know, just as a side bar, right? Mm -hmm. Guy looking up from the side. I would say, I think you underestimated yourself on on okay. that, obviously, right? And um, though, I mean, you obviously were able to adjust on the fly, make quick decisions, get things done, so mission accomplished. But I think in the beginning, I think you underestimated the, the value of this this product. And and you and you're probably right. I mean, you've known me for a long time now, and I don't I. <laughs> I, I, you're right. And, and I, and I had, and, and the thing is I put more work into this book and yes, I know. And I'll tell you right now, there are seven typos in this book. So for those of you who read the book and find the typos, congratulations, you found the prize. Huh. Um, I'm not concerned about that, but, and I'm not worried about that, but I put more work into this book than any book I've ever written. And so I guess I had more, I don't want to call it ego. I don't know what the right word is. Um, but I had more emotional investment in this book. And, and I was scared that people might not like it, even though I know that this really, I mean, this is what, this is what I got. I mean, I really didn't hold anything back. Um, you've had the book read to you. I know. You didn't even have to great. read the book. It's great. Um, but I mean, it's still, I, I'm, I'm always careful. Somebody told me one time, never believe your own press releases. And so I, I'm glad people are enjoying it. And I've been thinking about, you know, what would be the next book? You know, what's, what's the next level for this? Um, but yeah, maybe I did underestimate myself a little bit. But I don't know. I've always thought it's better to underestimate yourself a little than overestimate yourself a little bit. And, and it, because then you're always hungry and striving to do better. Right. Um, well, my lesson learned for folks is, you know, if you have this situation occur, right, one, I, I agree. I don't think it is, it is very valuable at all. In fact, it's a big waste of money if you overestimate yourself right? right and you buy too much then underestimate yourself. So I think the conservative approach is the better approach, but you have to have those contingencies that you had to be right. able to on the fly quickly uh, adjust your uh, supply to, to meet the, that demand. Right. And yeah. the one thing I will say that I probably should have done three or four days ago was come out and I, and I did it yesterday. I mean, I, I did a video and I explained exactly what was going on. I mean, it, it's in, in a lot of respects, it feels like every day has been two days as far as just the way oh, yeah. things have been going. Um, but I probably last, you know, middle of last week, I should have done a video and just explain, Hey, we've sold a lot more than we thought we would. I've been ordering books every day. Um, here's the reality of it. And I just didn't know we'd sell this many books. Right. I probably should have done that sooner, but I was so busy trying to get the books out and, and keep everything else going that I just didn't. And yeah. I should have. Is this on Amazon yet? No. Are you going to put it on Amazon? Well, it's funny you should ask because I had a long conversation yesterday with my publisher and we are going to do what he is terming the worldwide book launch for this, I believe on December 12th. Good. And what that's going to entail is that's when we'll blow it out on 
Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all these different distribution channels and stuff. Yep. Um, that's when we'll do that. Okay. So we're going to do a quote unquote launch party as opposed to, you know, what we've been doing, which is more like a funnel launch. Um, it's more of internal. Yeah. You know, your, your internal system versus going just the world and just putting it out there to the world and stuff. So, and I've talked with um, Russell and told him what was going on. He said, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's cool. Um, because I mean, quite frankly, I make, I mean, I make more money when people buy through the funnel. I mean, I would rather give people the book at, at, you know, just to pay shipping and, you know, have them see the, the one-time offers, which are amazing. I mean, there's one, one-time offer we do the, I mean, I'll tell you guys, we have order bump for of the audio book for 27 bucks, which is awesome. Oh, and we're going to be, we're going to get the audio book on audible dude. So we're nice. going to be on audible with, um, nice. with that was my audiobook. next question. My next yeah. question was Kindle and, and audible. Yeah, it'll be on Kindle. It'll be on audible. I mean, we're going to, we're going to do it like we're real, like real real yeah, good yeah of course <laughs> so real i'm i'm Making excited real about money that too. yeah so we're gonna <laughs> do it with different um you know those different avenues but still gonna keep advertising the the free plus shipping advertise the crap out of it on youtube and um facebook and anywhere else that we can run ads and stuff there you go well good so yeah. anything uh like last last question anything that you could have done better at any phase of this process. I think, you know, the, the one thing that was holding me back from launching it sooner, because I'm, I'm looking in the book here and the freaking copyright date on this is, is 2018. Um, so it's been, we've had it done for a while. Yeah. Um, I was hoping that, the click funnels gang would um would get behind it and so i was waiting and pushing it off and waiting and waiting because it it was it was worth it to me for them to get behind it um they had some internal things that that changed and i, I had to push ahead with it and and i wasn't i wasn't nasty or anything then i just said hey guys i got to move ahead with this i just i got to get it done and in a way that took the pressure off of them Mm -hmm. because they had so much other stuff going on that I, I kind of took back control of it and they gave me a hand with the design. Their lead designer there is amazing. So he helped us get the, the look and feel done. He had some time on a Friday. It was just, it's, it's weird how everything just kind of came together also. Right. Um, and we, I had some other things happen. I had a couple of appointments cancel on me that I wasn't out of the house when, when they contacted me and I wouldn't have talked to them right then. It was weird. It was like mm. the woo, 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 woo thing. It all worked um, out. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the big thing was that by taking control of it, I made it easier for them to say yes, because we got it all done. So all they had to do then was just say, Hey, can we, we'd love to push this. And giving myself a deadline and my team a deadline was how it got done. In the end, the only time stuff gets done is if there's a deadline. Yep. And having a deadline that, ha- that, that I was out there, that I was going to embarrass myself in front of my followers if I did not do it. There was a public consequence. So could I have done it sooner is usually my big thing is, you know, i I should do things sooner, but I don't think that's the case in this. I think everything came together at the right time in the right place with the right folks. And so I really, and and at one point I felt like I was really being kind of led through the process. It's hard to explain, but it was was, was coming together. I would agree because, you know, the neat thing about, you know, having a product that someone else is now going to endorse and put it as part of their package. They almost need to see it in, in action. Right. Meaning it produced really well for you with your original intent of the book with the, you know, book funnel scripts, you know, affiliate 
process. Yes. So they've already made money. Yes. You know, because of it. So they're yeah. happy. Yes. And then they're like, it just was a natural progression. So I, I get it. Right. I the, get it. The, the big thing I would, the kind of some takeaways, I don't know if we're in takeaway mode. Let's do it. Right now. But, but the big takeaway I would tell anybody <clears throat> is <clears throat> if you've got a book in you and you know, we've, we've talked about having books for different purposes in the past. We've got the three hour Kindle book wizard. Um, we, we've got all that where if you need a book for a specific purpose, like as a lead generator or something like that, definitely want to do that. There's also something to be said for taking the time and sitting down and really creating an amazing or as amazing a book as you can on a topic that just becomes your opus. And this really is kind of my opus of 22 yeah. years of selling online. What you need to understand is once the book is done, it's kind of like Stu's philosophy of, uh, or his process of explaining stuff of two through and after. Okay. You wrote the book that got you two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now the through is d getting it set up to sell, getting it, out there so people can get it doing whatever kind of launch you can do with the resources that you can harness and then the after is where all the work really is yeah. because if you do it right you should be able to sell this puppy for years right not not just for a month but for years you sell this and you really want to create a book that's evergreen I mean, this, this book is evergreen. This, this book will be as valid five, 10 years from now as it is today. I, I did it that way on purpose. So the big, that's really the big takeaway for me is that two through and after. Create the best book you can, that gets you two. Get it launched, get your sales process up, and then understand that the real work, if you do it right, this thing can pay dividends for years. Most people just throw their book out there and they're like, well, how come I'm not rich? It's mm -hmm. not, they don't give awards for best writing author. They give awards for best selling author. And the key what? there is selling. You've got to transition from being the writer to being the seller of your book. All right. So those are I'll my takeaways. What are your takeaways from, from the, from the sideline? Um, other than the original, just underestimate yourself, but you progressed very logically with the, uh, with the way it evolved, you know, from its original intent into what it is now. But then right. there's also another progression coming with the next level, yeah. uh, making it more externally available. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a win. Cool. Yeah. I think, I think it's just, it was, I mean, it was a long progression, but in, in some ways, I think it needed that to get to where it is now. Yes. Yeah. This was not, th this was not instant pot. This was all day crock pot. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To cook yeah. for a while. Yeah. So, well, cool. I would just leave everybody with this call to action. Go get your copy of Funnel of, uh, Copywriting Secrets at CopywritingSecrets.com. You will enjoy the book and uh, hopefully you will get some cool stuff out of it. And even if it just taught you two or three cool things that would help you, that's, everything just fell over. Um, if it taught you two or three really cool things that help you sell more, then it would definitely be worth it. So thanks, Stu. You're and uh, you guys... If you're not already members of the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks podcast, you should be, and uh, you can check that out. Also, head over to the JimEdwardsMethod.com. You can check out my blog. You can check out links to the podcast, past podcast episodes, and all kinds of cool stuff. So we will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Jim, and we'll see you on Facebook. <laughs>